from those who enter Islam leave Islam being upset and angry with Islam. Does anyone do this? And Abu Sufyan answers, no, no one does this. Remember, when he answers this question, it's not like me and you. He's reflecting over 19 years of fighting, waging war, going through all of those moments of his life against, at that time he's thinking, these evil Muslims. And 19 years flashes through his mind and he can't find a single instance. He can't find one in 19 years. So he says, no, no one does this. And then Hiratal, the answer, and I look at this, on the member, 1400 years later, we're going to take the advice of a non-Muslim. We're going to take an understanding for our lives, which is the difference between paradise and hell from a non-Muslim carried to us by Islam. What does he say? And that is exactly how Iman works. If it enters and penetrates into the depths and inner corners of the heart. When this happens, there's no way that anything except increasing Iman can happen. Love for that Iman, a sweetness that cannot be compared with anything such that people are willing to sacrifice everything for that faith. This is the reality. And then add to this the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Whoever finds these three things, then he will taste the sweetness of faith. Al-Bukhari mentions it several times in his Sahih. In Sahih Bukhari, you find it many times mentioned. And we know it. But really, I haven't contemplated it enough. And I'm guessing that many of us here haven't contemplated it enough. So the Prophet Sallallahu first, he says, there's three things, if you have them, you're going to taste the sweetness. And this sweetness is real. And you will not want to give it up ever. The only thing you're going to want is increase. You know that time when you tasted something really nice? I want you to remember that. That taste, it was so nice. First time you had this item of food, this sweet, this delicacy. And it was so good, what did you want? You wanted to have more and more and more and you wanted to keep eating. You didn't want to stop. That was a reality. Just like anything in this life, if you have that sweetness, you don't want to give it up, you want more and you keep wanting more. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says to us right at the beginning, three things. If you have them, you're going to taste that sweetness. You're going to want more and you're going to give up everything else for it. The whole hadith, the three things that the Prophet ﷺ mentions are not technical, are not facts about Islam, are not what they call haqa'iqul iman, the realities of faith or the technical features of faith, they're not those, none of them, none of them. The problem that we have of our time is that when we try to learn about Islam, we focus on the technicalities. Do this, don't do that, work like this, this is what we need to believe, this is how it is, that's what we face. And that's our focus. We've forgotten to face or focus on what the Prophet ﷺ said focus on. Halawatul Iman, the sweetness of faith. So the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ says is that you love Allah and His Messenger more than you love anything else, which also means that you hate everything that opposes Allah and His Messenger more than you hate anything else. Love and hatred. Ibn Abbas anhu, he summarized the whole of our faith and he says, it is love for the sake of Allah and hatred for the sake of Allah. You know, we all claim that we love Allah and His Messenger more than we love everything else and everyone else. This is a claim. Let me give you a yardstick by which we can measure our faith. And a yardstick which is 
more profound for men and a yardstick at the same time on the same issue, the first issue that is more profound for women. Okay, the one for the men. But you know Salat al-Fajr, when it's really early in the morning, when it's really early in the morning, but think about how you get up for Salat al-Fajr. And you know it's time, and your alarm's gone off. Yeah, you switch off that alarm, you put it on snooze, it wakes you up again, you put it on snooze, and you keep doing it until, on some occasions, and we hope they're not many, that you sleep through until Fajr is finished. Right, now let me take you to the comparison. Getting up for work. When you realize that, you know what, if I don't get up for work, I'm not going to earn no money today. If I don't get up to work, my boss may sack me. If I don't get up for work, I'm going to get a telling off at the very least from my boss. So you jump like there's no tomorrow out of your bed. You're getting ready, nothing distracts you and you're on your way. It's the reality. It's the reality. And one for the sisters. That time when your child gets up in the night, and it applies to us as well as brothers, and the child is in agony, pain. Immediately you jump out of your bed, you run. You take them immediately to the hospital, you'll do anything and everything, no matter what time it is. You'll move. There's no questioning about what you'll do. And then when it comes to the Salah, even after that, and it's time for the Salah, and you've, you're knackered, you can't move. You had hardly any sleep, if any. How are you going to move for your salah? That tells you, each and every single one of us, where we are when it comes to loving Allah and His Messenger more than loving anything else. It's not to judge anyone else. I'm crying over myself like you're crying over yourselves, I'm sure. Something that we need to work on. Then the Prophet wasallam he says, and that this person, he loves someone only for the sake of Allah, for no other purpose, love. So therefore on the opposite, you hate someone only because of Allah, love and hate. In the first one it was about love and hate, in the second one it's about love and hate, emotion. And in the third one, the Prophet ﷺ says that this person hates to return to kufr hates to turn to disbelief after Allah has saved him from it. He was there in disbelief and then Allah saved him. A blessing and a mercy from Allah. When did we last give Allah thanks and say in our adhkar that I am pleased with Allah as my Rabb and I am pleased with Muhammad as my Prophet and I am pleased with the Deen of Islam as my religion, when did we last say it and really mean it to Allah? And then the hadith says, just like he hates to be thrown into the fire. Now every one of us can appreciate that emotion. It's all about this emotion which brings about a reality in your life. If you're sincere to those three things, you will taste that sweetness and live the reality that the Sahaba were living. You know, if you realize these three things, you're on a different planet. The person next to you can't see that sweetness and feel that sweetness. But your heart will feel like it is with Allah in the clouds. That's the reality the Sahaba were living. But that reality is possible for every single one after them. Just realizing these three things. Remember, it's about love and hate. Now this whole thing is what we need to ingrain in ourselves and then nurture our children on this. We love for Allah, we hate for Allah. We never commit injustice. But with that, you will taste the sweetness or the greatest sweetness that is available in this world. And then you will sincerely sacrifice for the sake of Allah. If you don't do that, you're never going to taste that sweetness and you're always going to be unhappy. That's the reality the Prophet is teaching us.
Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too, so please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future, inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallah khairan.